fantastic. People love to exercise outside when Definitely. they can. Tomorrow on Via Magazine. This may look like a normal modeling session, but there's something very special happening here. Find out how a young lady's chance encounter with the TV critic Gene Shallot turned into a touching story of friendship and courage. Then we'll wrap up our three-part series on Rio de Janeiro and go nightclubbing with Brazil's King of the Night. Visit the largest nightclub in Latin America and find out why Rio has a reputation as the city that knows how to party. And after the housework is done, this mother becomes Macho Mom. Find out why she thrives on dangerous sports and makes them safe for kids. That's our lineup for tomorrow's show. Hope you can be here. Have a relaxing evening tonight. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Stay tuned for the 5 p.m. report on Channel 4. Watch out. Taco Bell's gonna give you the works. The works are three new combination platters just made for you. They're really saucy. Big and beefy. Cheddar cheesy. Crispy crunchy. When you're getting really hungry, ask for the works. Each for about $3. Eeny, meeny. Go for beanie. Fancy. This Career Network report comes from the YMCA, offering a variety of professional careers for men and women in program and management positions. The Y is an organization with 10 million members in more than 1,800 YMCA centers around the nation. And around the world, the YMCA operates some 12,000 centers in 90 countries. Which career appeals to you? Youth work, physical education, or how about accounting, fundraising, or general administration? Two liberal arts colleges specialize in preparing you for a Y career. George Williams College in Downers Grove, Illinois, and Springfield College in Springfield, Massachusetts. Check out the excellent employment benefits at the YMCA and equal opportunity employer. For more information about YMCA careers, call 371-8722. John Gallus inviting you to watch for our next Career Network Report. WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Serving and informing the Twin Cities for four decades. This is WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. And now, Don Shelby, Pat Miles, Bud Kraling, and Ralph John Fritz bring you Channel 4's 5 p.m. report. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. Pat Miles has some time off. An apartment fire went to three alarms in South Minneapolis overnight and left 10 people without homes. And now, Don, authorities suspect an arsonist started it all. The address of the fire, 3420 First Avenue South. There were no injuries, but as Colleen Needles is here to explain, the investigation has produced all sorts of interesting twists. Colleen. It sure has, Debbie. The fire started at about 3.40 this morning, but the trouble that may have led up to it began hours earlier. According to residents, just after midnight, a black woman came by looking for a Cuban man who lived in a second-floor apartment. He wasn't home, and residents say the woman got quite angry. Later, the caretaker noticed that the Cuban's apartment had been ransacked. The woman returned several times within the next few hours. Minutes after her last visit, the second floor apartment burst into flames, and within 15 minutes, the blaze had engulfed the entire building. All 10 residents were able to scramble out in time, but this morning, all are homeless, and most are empty-handed because they weren't insured. According to residents, last night's commotion was nothing out of the ordinary. According to tenants, the trouble began a year ago when some Cubans moved in. We've had drug busts, like... Two or three times a month, they got drug busts. They raid the place. Um, shootings downstairs. Everything. The guy from up there shot the guy over at Casey's one night. That's something. You know, you kind of hate. You hate to come outside and everything because you think you're going to get shot and all kinds of stuff. You get real nervous and you just it's a bunch of crap. Today, arson investigators are looking for the black woman and another man who might have been with her. They're also trying to find the man who lived in the apartment to ask him a few questions. Authorities believe the fire was set deliberately and that whoever was involved might have cut himself in the process because they found a trail of blood leading from the back stairs all the way to Nicollet Avenue. It looks as though it was a vendetta. Whoever burglarized that apartment prior to the fire 
uh, went through the contents of the apartment and scattered the contents as if they were searching for something. So we suspect it was a type of a vendetta type of operation. Debbie, authorities won't say how the fire uh, started. They speculate uh, all certain different things. They found a gas can in the apartment, but residents told them that it belonged there, so they really don't know exactly how it might have started. This is curious in that it comes the day after that big drug gun raid yesterday involving the Mario Cubans. Is there any connection? There might be a connection. According to residents, several of the Cubans who were arrested yesterday had lived at that building at one time or another. In fact, they said for about the past year, Cubans have been living in the building and that there have been problems there. Okay, Colleen, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And there was another apartment fire overnight in Minneapolis. This one on Hennepin Avenue. It started just before 3 a.m. Crews took about 15 minutes to bring the fire under control, but not before two people were sent to the hospital for smoke inhalation. They have since been treated and released. No one was left homeless by the fire. The cause is not known yet. And in Plainfield, New Jersey, a fire at a warehouse where plastic pipe was stored produced such thick, caustic smoke that hundreds of residents were forced out of their homes. Schools closed today, and firemen battled the stubborn fire most of the day before it was all over. Residents of Plainfield are just now returning to their homes. Don? International news. In New Delhi, India, the assassination of a Soviet embassy official. The man was shot to death in his chauffeur-driven car by two men on a motorcycle who pumped at least six bullets into the automobile. No one is speculating yet on a motive, but Indian officials are checking to see if there is a connection with the dis disappearance of another Soviet diplomat, which occurred on Sunday. Two members of a CBS television news crew were among the 20 killed in southern Lebanon today. It happened as Israeli troops stormed three Muslim villages. They were backed by tanks and helicopters. And during the raid, one of their shells apparently exploded close to where the crew was working. The two were killed, uh, where Lebanese freelance cameramen and their driver, uh, all were, uh, the driver rather, was critically injured. 100 people were also arrested during the drive. 25 years ago today, in 1960, the Sharpeville, South Africa riots hit the news. 69 people were killed, hundreds more injured in a protest over the racial policies there. And the massacre still stands as the most significant symbol of opposition to apartheid. Today, there was the anniversary march, and again, there was more violence. South African police shot and killed 14 black demonstrators. Dozens of others were injured as they threw rocks and refused police orders to turn back. Three or 4,000 people took part in today's march. Two years ago, there was about 11,000 cases of child abuse reported in Minnesota. Today, St. Paul Mayor George Latimer and the Children's Home Society announced a project to provide safety for such children in this city. Caroline Lowe is here with the details. Now, Minneapolis had a program, has or a program. has a program. Now, St. Paul institutes one today. Right. Two years ago, Minneapolis began a program called the Minneapolis Crisis Nursery. And today, the St. Paul officials announced that starting this fall, that they will open six nurseries and private homes in St. Paul, where people who feel that they're at the end of their rope, that they're about ready to abuse their child, just can't take it anymore, can call up and place their child there for up to three days. Yeah, we visited the Minneapolis nursery today, and they tell us that last year they had almost 700 children stay there for up to three days, and they had to turn away another 400, so they clearly feel there's a need there. Now, this is a voluntary thing. Do the parents themselves call up and do that, or is this something totally police order? No, it's totally voluntary. It's, it's voluntary. It's confidential. The uh, parents are urged to get counseling. That's a big part of it, and many of these children are repeats. They come back again, and many of the children have been abused before. But at least in this case, the parents are making the proper decision. If I feel like I'm in, in the mood or I, I can't cope with my kids, mm -hmm. there is a place now that the kids can go and be safe. Exactly. It's a time out for a little while, hopefully, for the parents to try to deal with the crisis at home. What about if there is a crisis between the parents, where violence may erupt between the parents and the children are in the vicinity? Can it still be used at that time, even though the children are not in immediate physical well, danger? something like that is likely to happen. They're more likely going to have a domestic or police are going to get involved. But one of the things they have found here is in almost all of the cases, they've involved children of young single women. Very rarely do you have the fathers involved. Where an individual comes into the home as, as a guest, as a boyfriend, as a stepfather, mm -hmm. or as a pending stepfather. But right. that doesn't seem to be as much of a factor. It's more the mother who is so stressed out, who just can't take it anymore, that says, please, I need help. You take my child for a few days. Well, that sounds like an excellent idea. Well, it seems to be working. As I said, they had to turn away 400 kids last year. And one of the things they're very careful about is they don't want it to be just a babysitting service, and they don't think it's been that. It's been people who really need it. All right, Caroline. Thank you very much.
Up next on the Thursday 5 p.m. report, a uh, long-awaited facelift for the Fauché Tower, or kind of an inside lift. Stay with us. It's uh, about seven minutes and a half past the hour. You go to your own dentist. You get regular checkups. You stop your dental troubles early before little problems turn into big problems. You have a healthy set of teeth. Teeth that look better and work better. You've got a Delta Dental Plan where you work. The only group dental plan designed to give long-term dental health to more Minnesota people. If you're going to buy a good used car, it should be now at Roseville Chrysler Plymouth. Here's some examples of easy-to-buy used cars. An 82 Chevy Celebrity, only $26.95 or $73 a month. An 80 Chevette, only $29.95 or $109 a month. And look at this 83 Reliant Wagon with equipment you want, only $49.95 or $136 a month. Over 100 used cars are sale price during our spring sale. See you this week at Roseville Chrysler Plymouth. Let's make a car deal. Color Tile will stop at nothing to reduce their inventory. Whether it's drastic price reductions or some other way, it's got to go. So now through Saturday only, selected wall coverings are half price. And Color Tile paint is half price. And a huge selection of mosaic and ceramic floor tile is half price. This is all half price because it has to go. So make it to Color Tile by Saturday because how it goes is up to you. Color Tile, where customer service makes all the difference. Fifty-five years ago, this was quite the building in downtown Minneapolis. But as buildings got taller and architecture more modern, the Fauché got lost in the crowd. Now plans have been announced to restore the Fauché by accenting its old elegance with modern-day techniques. Mark Watts reports. When the 32-story tower opened in 1929, its owner, Wilbert Fauché, bragged of excellence in many areas. The first skyscraper west of Chicago. The first constructed by all union labor and the first one with an observation deck. It dominated the Minneapolis skyline until 1972 when the IDS tower went up. Though the IDS surpassed the Fauché in many areas besides height, the owner of the Fauché says it is still the premier skyscraper. One friend of mine tells about throwing his school books off the roof uh, as a graduation ceremony and uh, everybody's got a story about the Fauché tower. But Wall says the building's inner beauty has eroded the last 30 years. Attempts to modernize it have only covered up what Fauché himself originally intended. So, Wall has planned $4 million worth of renovation. Acoustic tiles will be stripped off the walls to reveal marble, and all the brass will be polished up to bring back the original luster. Elevator cabs will be rebuilt, and the original chandeliers will be reinstalled. I think the public will really be pleased with what they see uh, when we're finished with the Fauché Tower. On a clear day, you can see 30 miles from his observation deck, Fauché once said. And if Fauché could see what has happened to his building the last 30 years, he'd be furious, one architect said. And it's time now the building be restored to its original beauty. Mark Watts, WCCO Television News, Minneapolis. There are several items to report from the state capitol this afternoon. The Minnesota Senate has given preliminary approval to a bill requiring drivers and front seat passengers to buckle up or face a $20 fine. A final vote is expected next week. The leaders of the farm protest movement Brownsville met today with the governor to urge his support of a one-year moratorium on farm mortgage foreclosures. Perpich has said he'll sign a moratorium if it has bipartisan support. And the House has passed and sent on to the Senate a bill to raise interest rates on most department store credit cards. It would go from 16 to 18 percent on revolving charge accounts. And retailers say it'll cost the average customer about 83 cents more per year on every $100 purchase. At the nation's capital, President Reagan is preparing for his news conference tonight. He is expected to face questioning, uh, questioning about the possible summit uh, with Soviet's new leader. That news conference can be seen here on Channel 4 starting at 7 o'clock. Don? Congressman Bill Frenzel says that he has been approached informally about succeeding William Brock as U.S. Special Trade Representative. It's a cabinet-level job. Brock has agreed to become President Reagan's nominee for Secretary of Labor. Now, Frenzel talked about the developments today with Jim Gately in our Washington newsroom. Congressman, first of all, would you like to be Trade Ambassador? And if so, why? Well, the answer uh, is uh, sort of. Uh, I think it's the best job in the government. and. Uh, if ever uh, I didn't want to be uh, a representative in Congress, 
and then I think the next best thing would be to uh, be the U.S. trade representative. Our trade position now has problems, obviously. We have a trade deficit. What would you recommend, what would you do in that position to help exports? Well, I, I think what we have to do is open up uh, markets around the world where we've uh, been denied either uh, unfairly or culturally or where we've not been able to uh, make an arrangement. That is, we've got something wrong in our market, so our goods are not being accepted someplace else. How do you help the Midwestern farmers, more grain exports? How do you do that, though? <laughs> well, with the, with the dollar as high as it is, and with our cost uh, uh, figures the way they are, it is exceedingly difficult uh, to do that. Uh, and it is also true that uh, world supply and demand of food is not uh, uh, particularly good from our export standpoint now. Uh, but I think uh, there are areas uh, where we can uh, try to do better than we have. Uh, obviously, the largest grain buyer in the world is, is now uh, indicating that it is more willing to deal with us. That's the USSR. So I think there are some opportunities out there, but it is not a, a great big oyster waiting to have its pearls removed. It, it's hard work to find those markets. Okay. Just like say, of course, the president has a news conference tonight. Will Mr. Reagan be announcing your appointment? <laughs> I think not. I hope not. I. I have uh, told those who are interested in me as a trade representative that I prefer to uh, stay in Congress. Uh, but if, you wouldn't turn it down if offered? If uh, the president asks, that gets to be a different story. Thank you very much, Congressman. Uh, Congressman Frenzel spoke to us before leaving for a House Ways and Means Committee meeting being held in Florida. The economy continues to grow, but figures released by the Commerce Department in Washington today suggest the gross national product is expanding at kind of a sluggish rate, 2.1% so far this year. Government economists had expected a bigger GNP increase than that. Today's weather was blue chip, however, and Bud Crailing will be along in just a moment to tell us all about it, as though we need to be told most of us experienced it, but we'll have the forecast as well. It's about 14 and a half past five. Michael, it's time for your medicine. The registered pharmacists at Kmart fill over 20 million prescriptions each year. It isn't going to taste sticky, is it? Professionals using brand name pharmaceuticals or generic equivalents were allowed. Okay, I'm ready. That's quality you can trust at a Kmart price. Now, that wasn't so bad, was it? Not bad for medicine. You can't do better than Kmart. Sometimes you wonder if a man was built to work so hard, your muscles get stiff, sore. You need the strong, sore muscle medicine. Absorbine Junior penetrates fast. Absorbine Junior penetrates deep with soothing warmth. Absorbine Junior loosens stiff, sore muscles so you can get back to work. When you feel you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders, get the strong, sore muscle medicine. Absorbine Junior. May I have your attention for an important announcement? Recently, your Twin City Mazda dealers loaned 125 new Mazdas to the St. Patrick's Parade officials, and we're glad we could help. But now the cars and trucks are back, and although they were used less than a week and have less than 300 miles, they can't be sold as new. That means you may never find a better time to buy. But don't wait. We only had 125 of these courtesy cars and trucks. On sale now at your nearby Twin City Mazda dealers. You know those business software programs that promise success but deliver some tough surprises? You need ability. Is one of those hard-to-learn software programs tying you up in knots? You need ability. Have you noticed that some business software programs can really let you down? You need ability. music you're hearing is that of a fellow by the name of Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach, as it was performed today at the Westminster Presbyterian Church. Today marks the 300th birthday of one of the world's greatest composers. Bach was born into a gifted musical family. While most of us know him for his fine musical compositions, back in his day, Bach was revered for his abilities as an organist. 
Bach worked as a musical director for several churches, and therefore much of his music was written for masses and sacred cantatas. Beautiful music. Happy birthday to that guy. All right, Dale, come on in. Tell us what you find. All right, Don. Right now, we're not finding a great deal of um, some uh, real smooth flowing traffic. Right now, looking at uh, 35W94 near downtown Minneapolis, and you can see uh, traffic moving along pretty much normally. We checked out, uh, well, 35E, uh, 36, 694, and all the normal routes down. Things are moving along pretty smoothly. Hope it stays that way, but uh, we'll, of course, keep an eye on things. We do have one minor accident. That's 494 West Bush Lake Road. No injuries, fortunately, on that, but everything else moving pretty much normally. We'll be back with you in a little bit. Probably no traffic today because everybody cut out of work early today to enjoy the weather. Oh, uh, I would Except have. us. <laughs> Lovely day. We had what we call in the weather center a nice 24-degree recovery today from 33 this morning to 57 degrees this oh, afternoon. Boy. And again, we label the day as the warmest day of the year so far, and the Mallards were out enjoying the sunshine, I'm sure. And the water. It's still sunny, 56 degrees, humidity, 51%. The wind is from the south at 14 miles an hour. The pressure reading is 30.03, pressure steady. Coolest of the afternoon temperatures in the northeast, where it was only 12 degrees this afternoon at Limestone, Maine, and the southwest and the southeast kind of shared the warmest honors, 80 degrees at both Thermal, California, and at Key West, Florida. 57 was our maximum temperature in the Twin Cities today. Well, we had some 40s around Detroit, just to the east of us, 49 degrees there. 40s in the Pacific Northwest this afternoon, low 40s at Spokane. Earlier today, behind that cold front, there was three inches of snow at Spokane. 60 degrees at San Francisco, also behind the cold front. But in the upper 60s at Jackson, Mississippi, a tornado touched down near Jackson earlier today. And golf ball size hail in that area. A half inch rain at both Memphis and at Tampa. 55 at Memphis in the 70s at Tampa. And we had a nice sunny day through all the upper Mississippi Valley. And uh, precipitation uh, continued today for the Pacific Northwest and the mountains of the Intermountain region, just southeast of Kalispell, Montana, nine inches of snow today. Some snow drifted down to the northern part of Utah, but this is all rain in here. We talked about the tornado near Jackson, Mississippi, heavy rains in that area, up through southern Illinois, over to the Carolinas, and down through Florida. A uh, half inch of rain at Tampa through the morning hours. It drifted up around uh, the Jackson, Tennessee area. And our forecast for the areas for mostly clear to partly cloudy tonight. We've still got some rain in about a 15-mile wide band from St. Cloud to just about 30 miles south of Duluth. Duluth temperature is at 47, while well, it's 57 degrees at St. Cloud. In that uh, cloud band, you see over the central part of the state are those showers, but mostly sunny in the north and the southern part of Minnesota for the afternoon. Uh, temperatures tonight, the forecast for the area, uh, will be, oh, tonight we'll be in the uh, low uh, upper 30s, 37 degrees is forecast uh, for tonight. With a forecast for tomorrow, the afternoon temperature should be around uh, 55 degrees. And then we've got a chance of some rain on Saturday with a Saturday temperature at 45 degrees. So we'll be in the upper 30s tonight and be around 55 for tomorrow and expect a little rain on Saturday. Good weather for ducks. Yes. Okay. The opening round of the Boy State High School basketball action starts, and Ralph John Fritz is up with the details when the Thursday Five continues. The next time you need a haircut, you could go to a barber shop or a beauty shop. Their haircuts may not cost much. Of course, they may not look like much either. Or you could go to a styling salon. You know, one of those places where they cut and blow dry your hair at a price that blows you away. Or you can come to Great Clips. Great Clips is the place that gives you what you want. A guaranteed style cut and blow dry. Both for one low price. Great Clips, $7. Open evenings, no appointment necessary. Presenting the new compact model for 1985 from Hills Brothers with solid body construction and custom wrinkled finish. Our new vacuum packing process makes it hard and wrinkled to keep the ground coffee fresh as fresh can be. But the final test is performance. Mm. Hills Brothers Fresh Packs in your choice of three models. It's Target's Big Sale, featuring enormous savings store-wide. Think spring and stock up big on colorful jelly shoes for women and girls. Two pairs for $4. Fashion sports socks for women are only 99 cents a pair. 
Legs Sheer Energy Pantyhose, two pairs for $5. It's savings on a grand scale during the big sale at Target. In with the old, out with the new. The great Toyota swap meet is on now. Your Toyota dealer has a big selection of new 85 trucks and cargo vans, so he's going swap happy. He wants to swap until every 4x4 is forgotten and every cargo van has vanished. Trading allowances may never be this high again. So come on in. Swap your old tired tub for a tireless workhorse. Make your super swap deal this week during the great Toyota swap meet. On now at your Toyota dealer. Hurry! We are very, very indeed proud to announce that WCCO Television today won the rights to broadcast the next three state high school hockey tournaments. Bids from four local TV stations were opened this morning by the State High School the League WCCO in St. Paul. TV. WCCO really? won the rights with a bid of $1,555,000, more than three times the winning bid of just three years ago. The second highest bidder was WTCN-TV at about $900,000. KSTP, which had vowed to win the tournament rights at any cost, bid $657,000. A high school league was stunned by the amount of the winning bid, saying the extra money would help fund chemical awareness and other high school programs. I cannot imagine what it's like to have a million and a half dollars in my... What's it like? I thought you gave the first million of uh, your next... Yeah, I should say, that's the good news. We won, we won the rights by paying a million and a half dollars. The bad news is that Ralph won't be here next year because we had to use his salary to do that. But I, 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 I read somewhere where Indiana in state revenue, or in revenue for the State High School League was the biggest in basketball. I think this may surpass it. I'll verify that for you as soon as I can. One million, five hundred, fifty-five thousand. That's a lot of money, isn't it? Woo, but we are son. happy to have it. The Minnesota State High School basketball tournament yes. got underway this afternoon. A couple of sites. Uh, first in class AA. I want you to see a shot coming up at the end. Here. Okay. Now, this is double A. Uh, Minneapolis North here breezed to an easy win over St. Thomas Academy. Number 22 there, Bobby Walker. Uh, he had 18. North whipped the cadets 83 54. Here's another outside jump shot. Mm. Number 14, oh, Doug Carter there. He had 23. Brett McNeil had 13 for the North Polars. And here McNeil mm -hmm. scores and is fouled on the play. He got a three pointer out of that one. Yep. Now, watch the great move here, Don. This reminds me so much of you. Number 22 you. there, Tony Adams with the steal. No, watch the helicopter layout. Whoa, oh, right. And uh, that he had 10 points, 83-54 north over St. Thomas. Didn't like me. Uh, was that a great shot? Yeah. Now, while basketball is a tradition at Minneapolis North, the winners there, there's a school from the north which makes frequent trips south to the state tournament, Duluth Central. Now, oh, yeah. The Trojans down Rochester, John Marshall, 59-50. Duluth has the worst record of the eight AA teams, but this, their 11th state appearance, started off on the right foot. That game was not as close as the score. The Trojans take what opponents uh, give them, and John Horner demonstrated that with a move to the the hoop right through the wide open lane there. Minneapolis North and Duluth Central advance to the semis. Now tonight in double-A, Bemidji takes on Jefferson of Bloomington and Wilmer and White Bear Lake. That should be a good one. White Bear Lake, the defending champions, unbeaten, looking for their 50th win in a row. De La Salle is favored to win the Class A championship. Mm -hmm. The Islanders coasted to uh, open that uh, tournament. They really didn't coast. They should have, but uh, they win 50-46 to to over Twin Valley. Pinpoint passing led the Islanders' number one ranking. That back door there to number 44, Nathan Carson. Twin Valley came back in this series of the game right here. The Tigers cut a 10-point deficit to two, but that's as close as they got. It was 50-46 to 46 for De La Salle. Now, uh, one other score in Class A, Ceylon uh, defeated Cedar Mountain 53-44, and tonight Winona Cotter plays Lesur, and then Glenwood takes on unbeaten Greenway. That should be a good game. So that'll continue. We'll have more uh, tonight at uh, North's six looking good. North's looking good. Mm -hmm. Tony Queen and the McNeil legacy out yes. there. <laughs> All right, Deb. We'll get a final rush hour traffic check when the Thursday Five continues. It is now 526. <laughs> Quality, guaranteed workmanship, and thousands of fabrics, they're all yours with Park Reupholstery that's half the cost of new furniture. Half the cost means that Park will reupholster your sofa for as low as $199 and your chair from only $99, including fabric and labor complete. And if you order this week, Park will give you a new ottoman and matching fabric free with your sofa or two-chair order. Call Park for a free home appointment any day or evening. Call Park at 822-3157. Thanks to the cake, you can't pinch an inch. Thanks to the cake, you can't pinch an inch. On me!
With the help of the 220 calorie Kellogg's Special K breakfast and those big, crispy, low sugar, high protein flakes, I can't think of a tastier or better way to start my day. Thanks to the K, you can't pitch an inch on me. In the land of Dairy Queen, we treat you right. There's a sale on everything smooth, flowing, delightful. It's in the land of the Dairy Queen Sunday. Come discover the land where good taste comes through. Buy one Dairy Queen Sunday, get another one free this Monday through Friday at Dairy Queen. In the land of Dairy Queen, we treat you right. You get to feeling kind of special because you're special at your country club market, your neighborhood store. Country Club, a special place with special money-saving prices. Chicken of the Sea tuna, packed in oil or water, six and a half ounce can, 49 cents this week. And Pillsbury cake mixes in a wide variety, 19 and three-quarter ounce box, only 49 cents. Just two of this week's specials at Country Club. What's really special at Country Club is you. 28 minutes after 5 o'clock now, time now to check back with Dale. Is it still smooth sailing out there? Well, in most of the metro area, yes, Debbie, uh, right now looking at 35E and Highway 36, you can see very smooth sailing here. Still a problem out in uh, the other side, uh, 494 and West Bush Lake Road, eastbound 494. Uh, that accident is still there, and it does have some minor injuries, uh, Debbie, so it'll take a little while to get that cleaned up. Otherwise, the rest of the metropolitan area is moving along quite smoothly, and everybody should get home pretty much on time, except for that one area out there in the southwest side. So we'll see you all tomorrow. All right. Thanks a lot, Dale. Busy day. Yes. News, both uh, here at home and nationwide. Presidential nationwide. News Conference tonight. 7 o'clock here in CCO. A number of issues he'll probably take up. The MX missile funding has to be undertaken by the House of Representatives. You probably talk about Gorbachev a lot, wouldn't you think? Mm -hmm. U.S.-Soviet relations, yes, certainly. Geneva Arms Limitation talks, and uh, he probably will have uh, something to say about his budget, which uh, intends to continue raising the defense expenditures at the cost of domestic programs, which it doesn't appear the legislature is really ready to go with right yet. Mm -hmm. That's coming up at uh, 7.15 tonight. In the meantime, stories you can look for tonight on our 6 o'clock news. Senate approval of mandatory seatbelt legislation in Minnesota. Pat Kessler reports on what happened today. Mike Strand's been over at the Department of Natural Resources, where the push is on to open an access to Christmas Lake in the western suburbs. And Trish Van Pilsen spent her day at City Hall, looking into efforts to close Joe's Bar in the wake of the Mary L. Cocaine bust. Now, CBS. Good evening. This is the CBS Evening News. I'm Charles Kiralt, sitting in tonight for Dan Rather. Awful things happened today in two parts of the world from which we are used to hearing news of violent...